Welcome to the Secure Mobile Worker Session, presented by Matt Nalbone, and introduced by me, Roland Pellett. Enjoy. So now we're going to actually talk about something I, I refer to as Secure Mobile Worker, and, uh, and, and Matt, uh, you know, has slightly different names for it, but it really boils down to making sure that people can connect from wherever they happen to be in the mine, right? And, uh, and so I'm looking forward to, to Matt sharing uh, some of his knowledge. Matt, uh, as you heard earlier, uh, you know, was making oil and gas references already um, wow. in his commentary earlier with shutdown turnarounds. Um, but really, there's a rich amount of his, you know, crossover between what we see in the refinery market and in the process um, processing market around mining. And a lot of that also pushes out into the mine as well. So I'm glad to have Matt here with us today and uh, and walk us through uh, kind of what you're seeing in terms of mobile worker, secure mobile worker, and how they can really take advantage of connectivity anywhere on, on, on the mine. Okay. Maybe introduce yourself a little bit. I didn't, uh, I didn't walk through that um, here, but maybe oh, that's okay. give us a bit of an idea of, of where you're coming from and then, uh, and then walk us through what you've got. Sure. So uh, my background has been mentioned is primarily oil and gas. I worked in the industry for some years in all segments. Um, got a little bit in touch with mining since being here at Cisco and understanding what goes on there. But I, there is a lot of crossover to Roland's point. As far as the technology goes, a lot of the needs, uh, you know, just it's a big industrial site. And so the the prospects for what you want to implement and the outcomes you're looking for are generally very similar to oil and gas. So being able to discuss them, you may hear me make some oil and gas references. So forgive me and uh, please someone let me know if I need to explain something, but I think we're going to do okay. Um, so I am part of the oil and gas uh what you want to call it. I'm a specialist, but I do internet, uh, industrial networking in IoT, and I support the Americas here at Cisco. And of course, I had to get my good picture up there. Um, <laughs> so one thing I want to call out, too, is that I, I refer to this, to this mostly as connected worker more than I will the other terms that have been kind of thrown around because connected worker, to me, really embodies what this is. Uh, mobile worker, sometimes people think of other things. I'm in a car, I'm moving around, but the connected worker to me is really what, what stands alone in this. What I want to cover first is what are the challenges and drivers around the connected worker? Uh, the, the human and machine interactions are something that's really come to the, the front of everybody's attention. What are we looking at? How can we change how we're dealing with the machines? Uh, things like changeovers, right? The, the maintenance checks, things that are going on. How are we getting information from machines, not through some time insensitive way, but directly, right? Right now, right in front of me, I'm dealing with this. What do I need to know about it? Oops, sorry. Uh, there's a QR code explosion. Everything has got a QR code. You can't walk up to a piece of equipment, a pump, a compressor. They all have some kind of coding on them. So how can I more easily enable my workers to understand what that piece of gear is, how it works and what it has to do with their existing job. Uh, the unfilled jobs that we see are going to be coming up because of the skill sets that are having to change, the misperception of industrial jobs. This is, is a challenge because if we're not moving to address those things, we're not going to get new workers. We're not going to get people to replace those uh, who are moving out of the workforce, who are moving out of these industrial jobs. Applications are everywhere your banking app, your, in, your insurance application, your ordering food. I mean, it's all based on a phone. It's all based on these applications. So delivering these types of simple, I'll use air quotes, simple applications to workers in a way that they can access their data is critical. It also blends really well with those who are millennials. I have a 19 and 24 year old. They live by these applications, right? That's how they work. That's how they do things. And if you're putting them in a position within a company that doesn't offer this type of accessibility or ease of use, if you will, you won't get those types of people coming to work for your organization. And then content and context is something else that's important. Applying the real-time data to what you're doing right now. Why is it important? What can you do to make what you're doing better and be more efficient at it? 
And without that connection, without being a connected worker, it's difficult to provide that real-time content and context to the workers. So a connected worker is more than just giving somebody a tablet and sending them off to their job, right? It's, it's the culmination of the wearables, of the smartphones and tablets. Oops, I went the wrong direction there. Sorry, folks. Um, how all of the things are connected, how they're getting the data, how they're exploiting the data to make their jobs not only easier, but more efficient and more safe. And please, Roland, whoever, stop me if you want to chat about something or have questions. I'd be glad to stop. Oh, I'll have questions yet. You're okay. doing great. Okay. And then, so, the digital workforce, you'll hear that term thrown around as well. And what makes up that, right? What's the investment? It's the safety that you're giving, the improving. It's the better productivity you're going to be getting. Uh, like I mentioned, attracting new workers, the younger workers. It's remote access to experts. Like, I'm having trouble in my job. Um, the, the egregious example I use in talking to my own gas customers is, Hey, uh, this is on fire. I probably need to talk to Don about this. So I need to get him on video so he can see this to tell me this isn't supposed to be on fire. Right. And then the field access to the tools and applications they need to do to perform their jobs. And obviously the foundational part of this that enables everything connected worker is connectivity that can be on your own networks. It can be across public networks. It just depends on, on how you're operating. And then obviously security components come into that as well. The mobile devices and applications are the enablers and the collaboration, being able to talk to each other, talk to experts, share material, share pictures, share video to get a better understanding of what's happening in that environment. So where is the investment right now? Primarily, it's going to be under the big data. It's IoT as a broad spectrum of things, mobile devices. And as I mentioned, again, it's about the connectivity that's at the root of all of these things, be it wireless, it, it, whatever format that might be in. And what we've seen is measurable about 13% in some industries or the reduction in accidents and incidents within their operations from having this kind of connected data accessible, not only for the workers and their applications, but for connecting the workers to their environment. Yeah, that's pretty significant, Matt. Um, the I, I think you know at the beginning when I talked about digital operations really, you know, being the key to agility. There's some really hard data behind that, right? I mean these these numbers aren't just pulled from thin air. These are actually studies that have been done with you know with customers who've gone through this transition and measured before and measured after. Um, like these aren't just numbers to sell. These are numbers that that should give you a pretty objective view of, of what kind of impact some of these transitions can have. And so if you're putting together an ROI for a particular transition from, from a, a more traditional system, maybe to a digital system, um, or you're upgrading a digital system, there's probably numbers out there that you can use for that ROI. And you can actually measure yourself to, to identify kind of what your ROI is on specific transitions. So this isn't just a, you know, you need to have this because it's cool and it's going to attract new hip employees. This is actually saving the company money and making the environment safer. So, yeah, yep. I, I bang on that. And, and I'll mention this to you. I'll, I'll, I call it out again later, but to the point that you're saying about ROI is the biggest I'd say error I've seen in some customers is trying to wrap the ROI around a single use case, right? Yes. Establish multiple use cases for where this ROI can be be uh, determined because basing it on one, it will be very difficult to make an ROI in any kind of timely manner. Yeah. And then I break up the connected worker into pretty much two buckets. It's the, the workforce productivity and workforce continuity. And it's something we've covered before in the past here at Cisco over on our portfolio Explorer, but these two really embody what the connected worker are about. One is about secure collaboration, be able to be better at your job, be able to understand your environment, the machines better. The other is about workforce continuity and being able to connect people who are in disparate locations with those people who are in the field doing that work in the front lines, right? Being able to maintain visibility into those environments, being able to build the ability to contribute to those as well that are maybe having problems or just need advice and, and guidance. 
So I won't go through these. These are just a little more detailed listing of, of each one of those items about the drivers, the business needs, the capabilities that are needed, as well as the business outcomes. These all are in alignment with you know what we've discussed. It's efficient operations, it's employee safety increases, it's modernization of the workforce as a whole, and then the capabilities that you would get or need to deliver as part of this. Not a big slide reader, so once you guys get these slides, I know there'll be that um, that exercise performed. Um, it is all contributes to what would be a human-centered digital infrastructure, right? That infrastructure is the mobile workforce, it's the digital workflows, it's helping workers understand what is it I need to do to fix this piece of equipment, being able to have access to those things on demand, not going back and forth to get a, a binder of instruction, a PNID to understand how these things are connected. That digital workflow puts this in their hands right now. And that's part of that digital knowledge is being able to have that accessible to them, having people that can help with this um, those specific jobs. Digital safety, obviously, paramount, right? Let's keep people safe uh, in the oil and gas industry. It's reducing people on board to make sure that we have a small risk profile as possible. And all of that can go into what the overall digital vision is. And what I like to say is, what do you want to be when you're, you know, in 2030? What do you want it to look like? How do you want to be working and operating? What are the things you want to fundamentally change that you would need that runway for? And all of this can lay out to help that. And then each one of these infrastructure pieces have their own scalable value. Each one of these has a bucket that can be measured. These are the use cases or these are the ROI targets that you'd want to set because they have real measurable results that you can get from these things. So the areas of impact and operations, let's drill down just a little bit, right? The availability of the equipment, you have to have it online. You have to have it functioning, be it a an earth mover or a compressor or a, a wellhead, it doesn't matter. They need to be accessible. They need to be doing their job. And if they're not, there's some problems. So some areas where a connected worker can come in and be more valuable to ensure that these things are happening is having that digital checklist on hand for them, right? Again, it's not a binder. It's not a clipboard. It's something that they can see and interact with in a, in a real-time manner. Uh, plot cards, data entry, and, and, and operation and shift logs, right? What can I see that's happening right now that might impact me? As a supervisor, I can have access to all of those individuals that might be moving around, understanding what their locations are and how that can impact my flows and, and physical workflows of, of everyone. And it's, you know, real-time process data that I might need to understand better about a piece of equipment. Oh, I know that this is it's working fine right now, but I can see that there's some difficulties that are coming up or some things that might be underperforming. I need to address that now. And it, it could be as simple as, you know, brakes sticking. It could be something as, as easy as a, a compressor that may be not quite performing. The bearings are going out. They're not out, so it's working. But I need to know that that's happening. And putting that in my hands as I'm walking around a site or driving around a site makes me be able to make that data actionable. I skipped too far. Nope. And then on the health and safety, right? This is at the top of everybody's list. We need to keep people safe, not only for the individuals themselves, but obviously for operations. We have people that are down or out of their job for what period of time that impacts what we're doing and how we're getting it done. So being able to monitor and track health employee, um, employee health from a fatigue standpoint, uh, are they overheated? Are they too cold? Are they, are they stressed? Uh, not perspiring enough. It just depends on what the the the, the things are that we're trying to look at. Uh, this is one that had come up in oil and gas in a refinery because of their firefighters, right? They're running into very hostile environments. How can I keep tabs on these guys to know that they're overheating? They've been in that environment too long. They're getting fatigued. They need to come out, right? And they can get their own because they're connected, they get their own alerts that they need to get out in addition to those who are supervising the operations. Um, notification of safety violations. When somebody's in an area that requires hearing protection, I can use video analytics and you know a, a, a beacon on him to determine, hey, he just pulled that off, right? We need to alert somebody, namely him, to put it back on and the people that are in charge of safety so that they can understand the infraction and, and record it, especially if there's an incident. So 
connecting the worker to all of these different things via sensor, via wireless technology, it again, it's a wide open game on how all this works, but it's all about connecting the people, connecting to the data and giving it to people so that it can be used and leveraged appropriately for the business. So, you know, we've talked about a lot of these. These are just the capabilities associated with it, right? A connected worker solution, it can reduce maintenance time. It can keep workers more safe. It keeps them in tune with their environment and it keeps the environment in tune with them. That's really kind of a two-way street, uh, especially if you have things like proximity sensors, things of that nature, go, no, go zones. We need to shut down this piece of equipment because somebody's walked into that area. But all of these things contribute to that. They're all supported with perhaps a different application. But the nice thing is that they're all foundationally built on the same types of connectivity, securing the network, and, and having access to the data and applications that are needed for this. Hey, Matt, where do you see people starting with this? Like, um, obviously, this gives a pretty, pretty compelling picture of everything being connected, right? And you being able to access everything. But obviously, not all of that's going to happen at once, right? Um, do you see people starting with access to, uh, to ERP systems and stuff like that? Or do you see people starting with just sort of voice and video tools first? Um, or, or is it, you know, ticketing systems and, and, and health monitoring? Like, where, where do you start? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a big depends. And the reason I say that is because everybody's focus is going to be different. Uh, some of the some of our other customers in oil and gas, this has been centered on an incident, right? So as sad as that is, they had a safety incident, something happened. So how can we make sure that doesn't happen again? Okay, now what other use cases can we build into it? But that becomes the focus. Um, right. From the collaboration perspective, I had a customer who was looking at Instant Connect. This was some years ago, but they were looking at it to augment the radio system. What was the target, right? What could we do with it now beyond it? So there's always a different catalyst. Um, so I couldn't say, oh, look at it in this way. Yeah. One thing I will say, caveat it with, is always build in as many use cases as you can and try to attack the ones that are going to be the shortest time to value that you can possibly put in line. So it's, it's probably worth evaluating a few of them and then just really nailing down the biggest ROI ones, right? Yeah, I mean, you could just take this list of the slides and put them in an Excel spreadsheet and say, are any of these interesting? Okay, yes, these are all interesting. Now let's point rank them one to 10 or one to whatever this is and say, okay, which ones would we want to focus on? Which ones can we see the most value from, right? That'd be two columns. Most value, fastest time to value and just organize it like that or do a little, you know, I worked on something like this with a two by two graph. I know I'm getting out of the track here, but just put these yeah, in no. a two by two, right? Time to value, most value, find out what ends up in the lower right-hand quadrant, quadrant yeah. upper right, and you're done. And those are the ones you could yeah, start another, with. Another way, I, I've actually seen uh, the, our friends at Emerson do this, right, with the same use cases as they actually have a spreadsheet and, and they identify, okay, you know, how are the different roles in, 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 the, in the facility going to benefit from these things? What's the, you know, ROI for, for these different use cases? And that actually adds up the, you know, the cost of the solution and the ROI in a very neat spreadsheet. And, mm -hmm. and they've had some very good success with that, that approach too, right? So Yeah, I mean, often um, all of these look like great things, but I mean, for most people, um, augmented reality enabled workflows probably isn't going to be high on the list. I mean, there's obviously value there, but it may not necessarily be what they're looking at, right? They want, they want worker awareness and audiovisual communications. Well, that's great. So let's focus on that. What's the foundational part of that? And what are these other ones we can tie together? Yeah. Yeah, if you're still going hunting for binders when you need to do something, um, then, you know, maybe start there, right? I and true, just anecdotal little thing here. There's a customer that they thought having a flip phone and a three ring binder in the truck was having a connected worker. So, well, I mean, they can make phone calls. So that's right. Connected, right. I can make phone calls and I got my PNIDs. I can look it up. I'm, I'm done. Right. So, but yeah, that's that. That's that's what I look at. Just put them down and 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 uh, prioritize and see which is time to value, which could be the fastest. Perfect, yeah. So, you know, some reasons, and I, I did a little digging on some of this to find out why are digital mine workers, connected sa workers safer, right? And more productive than their non-digital counterparts, right? So things like 
you know, the workplace exam, right? How do I get that information? Do I go in there by myself with a clipboard and then I have to walk back or on a radio, I mean, just whatever it is, right? What extra steps, however instantaneous those extra steps might be, still detract from getting that data to people as quickly as we can, right? Something like uh, real-time access to an SIC system, right? Because then I can see the shift right away. I know what's happening. I know how everything is going to be able to adjust on the fly. Uh, On-demand access to that real-time information, everything in there from the safety to the productivity can be put in one place to be able to understand it, be delivered to the workers so they know what's happening, All right? And one thing, you know, the mind, this is an interesting little thing, the, the a mind can be a little bit of a mystery, right? I know what goes in, these people are going in, this equipment's going down in there, this stuff is coming out, I can see it all, but what really happening sometimes is a little unclear, right? But if I can gather all the data from all of that activity, I can make my operations better. I can make people more safe. I can understand what the detractors are from, from my production, right? And then digital technologies just as a whole all work together to not only make that better, they create this connected worker. Perfect. Uh, and then just kind of high level business benefits, right? We've talked about these uh, this entire conversation, right? Safer workers, better asset management, uh, better access to critical information, real-time communications, be it video, voice only, uh, I know Keith had mentioned, or it was Wes saying that that high critical conversation we want to have via voice. But more importantly, I think we want to see people. All right. I, I was talking to a guy that was um, a land manager in Permian. And when he was talking to those guys that were at headquarters, he wanted to see their face. He wanted to know, A, they were paying attention to him. And B, he wanted to be able to read the room when he was talking. And having this face-to-face -face type of conversation, you know, is is a huge deal within plants the facilities that i've been in they want to be able to see the people they're talking to yeah and then finally just consider these things right I, we talked about the value proposition of the use cases what am i going to get from them right the benefits that they'll bring make sure that they're measurable right how can i ensure that what i'm investing is going to get me money back and then embed those use cases into the operational workflow because if not embedded to the workflow, people won't do them. They might not actively avoid them, but they're not going to be what they do over and over again. Uh, obviously, proper change management. Don't just throw one of these changes out there. I know it sounds silly even to, man to, to mention that, but that happens a lot, right? A smaller group decides we're going to do this, and then the people who are expected to adopt it don't know what to do with it, don't know how it's impactful to them. There's no story behind it for them. And finally, all this connectivity brings with it security challenges. So make sure that security is not being compromised, either from the operations perspective or the individuals, that you're not leaking data about something you have going on that might be critical or could be influenced by others. So Matt, and, maybe this is obvious to, to most of the audience here, but I, I'm just curious, you, you mentioned something interesting around, around adoption and, and change management. Um, how do you how do you actually navigate that, right? Do I mean we all know people who've been you know at these industrial sites for you know dozens of years and really don't want to change. It's you know the, their processes have worked for them for all these years. Why would they need to change? And uh, and so obviously there there's a um, a benefit there, or we wouldn't be bringing this, these changes in. But how do you actually communicate that to some of the people on the ground? Yeah, and a lot of times what happens, I think, from a, a worker perspective is saying, oh, well, my job's going to be eliminated or my job's going to be changed. So first and foremost, it's not about replacement or elimination. It's about retooling, right? It's about improving and making these things better, right? It's not about a role replacement. It's about a role a change or a role pivot to what you're doing, right? You're no longer doing X, this is, but all of this that you had done now results in this position of why. That would be some of the first communication that has to happen because people make assumptions, right? And they always go to the worst possible assumption they can have. Also have to sell the value. Why does this make my job better, right? How is this going to help me, right? We all look at me, what's my, how does this influence my day-to-day? -day? What's my sphere gonna change? And I think that's a part of it as well. And it has to come, in my opinion, from the top down, but it can't be as far as a, you know, I'm going to use this word, mandated, 
But at the same time, it has to be some support of a, a grassroots effort. It has to be some organic yeah. desire to want to do some of these things. And they usually meet in the middle quite successfully. Um, yeah. And we don't have control I mean, it's over just all a those step, things. Step, but, step, right? That's the thing, right? Right. But I think that's how we see it most successful, right? Is coming from both sides and adopting as needed and changing where it has to to make it the most successful. But it's, it's about notification, right? It's sharing. Don't do this in secret. That's a big thing. You know, once you surprise somebody with something that's a big change like this, oh, well, you're going to have to wear this headset now and drive around and do this, that, and the other. Okay, well, what does that really mean to me, right? So it's communication and training. I mean, to me, those are the biggest yeah. parts of this. Yeah, for sure. So um, I know you're going to hop into to product here in a second. I want to give you that time. But uh, we we just uh, I'm just going to uh, talk a little bit about the poll here that we did about what collaboration tools people are are, are focusing on and, and finding useful. Um, the the lion's share is still voice and video, right? That's really the focal point for collaboration of this audience. Anyway, I think other audiences might be different. I don't know. Uh, remote work is a close second, right? Remote work and voice video are two big ones. I guess that makes sense given kind of what we've been through the last couple of years. Uh, document collaboration is actually closing in on it, right? And and um, and I'm not surprised that Push to Talk, uh, Push to Talk is a pretty focused audience, so that's not as big of a group. Um, and then AR VR is still pretty niche, right? Talk a little bit about um, uh, you know the kinds of collaboration you're talking about. Is does all of that fit into the kind of the voice video category? Is it really fundamentally different? Yeah, and I think, you know, it's funny you mentioned the document collaboration piece. I think that's where I see that quite a lot, obviously, is in, you know, fixed facilities, plants, um, you know, either petrochem, refineries, things of that nature, because you have somebody who's out there working who has to have some kind of information to fix something or to understand a process. So what do they need? They need a PNID. Oh, I don't have that right now. Let me use this collaboration tool, be it a headset like a real wear or even a phone, if yeah. it's permitted in that use, to do a voice call with you who can then share a document directly with me. Or something like, I'm just going to plug, you know, something like WebEx. I can then have a room that may be first shift change operations, and we could all share what's happening there. So not only can we share that information and documentation instantaneously, we now have a way to monitor compliance. What did we do? How did it get fixed? Who viewed this? Who is able to comment on this, right? So we have an automatic, if you will, compliance record. It's obviously not official, but it's a way to go back and check ourselves. What did we do? How did we proceed? How did we actually do that last time? Yeah, and document sharing can actually go beyond just kind of Word documents and spreadsheets, right? I mean, this. This goes into you know sharing sharing records and ERP systems, sharing uh, records and maintenance systems, and asset tracking systems, and all of that. Right? It's about common information, really. Right. Yeah, and the access to those applications, the permit to work type applications that we see, uh, the P six and and Unifier from you know our friends at Oracle and how those projects ma get managed and what is where in supply chain from a from a STO standpoint, where is that piece of equipment? Where is that gear, right? So I can understand and then change my schedule based on those things. But it's mm -hmm. it's all of this together that really makes that full picture of what a connected worker looks like. And to your point of where to start, maybe that's it. Maybe document sharing and, and that type of collaboration is a place to start because again, it's gonna have at the foundation, the security and the connectivity, but that has a broad base of acceptance and usability, right? It's not niche at all within that organization. They they are clearly have needs to share those types of, of things. Right. Yeah. No, this is great stuff, Matt. Um, so what, what products are the foundation to this then? Um, if you just want to kind of round. Well, I, products, I would so. be remiss if I didn't put a product slide in here. So yeah. I wanted to make sure I included it, but I mean, honestly, it, the networking connectivity, obviously, right. That's what we do. So, but wireless is huge, right? Because, to be able to enable true mobility, I can't be toting a wire along with me, but that wired infrastructure is critical to be able to extend those wireless access. So, I mean, I just want to include this slide. Obviously, most of the things on here from a actual piece of equipment support a connected worker and mobile worker in some form or fashion. Um, you just kind of have to determine what the method is, and then we could hone in on what the product would be to do that. 
and what it enables. But then we extend it also as part of the cybersecurity footprint that we have, its capabilities that are built into money, well, a few of these pieces of equipment directly, how to do edge compute and that connectivity with sensor to cloud, if that's something that's interesting. And then obviously the management and automation that goes into these pieces of equipment. Yeah, but for sure. Those to me, are, that's a whole other conversation around those things. <laughs> Um, well, we'll be covering I, some I of that tomorrow. I didn't want to go right? through the portfolio. Yeah. I just wanted to provide it so people can get an idea of what's yeah. out there. It's all good, for sure. No, it's it is a lot of information we've been dumping on on people, and it's only going to continue here for for the rest of today and tomorrow. Um, definitely keep in mind our our Cisco.com site that's dedicated to mining. I don't know that we've covered this URL yet, but it's really easy to remember. It's Cisco.com slash go slash mining. Try it out. Uh, in your browser, if you have trouble getting to it, uh, let us know in the chat. Uh, but it's cisco.com slash go slash mining. Thanks, Matt. And thanks for taking us through Secure Mobile Worker. I also thank you for joining us and invite you to join us for the industrial security session, which is up next. And all you have to do is click on the next video and enjoy.